Wow, that's absolutely insane. SpaceX is planning to build a new type of Starship's launch pad. The first signs of this come from the recent activities on the orbital launch mount in Florida. This promises to be a breakthrough that helps Starship be caught this year. So what will the new launch pad look like? Find out everything in today's episode of TechMap. Possibility, SpaceX is planning to reform entirely Starship's ground support system. Why can I be so sure? While prior to Flight 3, we witnessed the redesign of the orbital tank farm in Starbase. Now, during the time between Flight 3 and Flight 4, it's the turn of Starship's launch pad within LC-39A. Specifically, on March 22, one more leg of the OLM at the Starship launch pad in LC-39A, known as SpaceX's Starbase Orbital Launch Site, OLS, was removed. This raises a series of questions, including whether there will then be further removal, an overall change in plans, or a significant design change in the building. Referring to the surprising activity in Florida's OLM, several hypotheses arise. Firstly, it's about the significant design change. The current six legs may be replaced with three new legs, meaning the launch mount might just need three legs to adapt to the new design of the launch table. This is probably because recent Starship flights have shown the SpaceX team the benefits of tripod design and the shortcomings of the current structure. Thus, researching and redrawing design drawings should be a compulsory requirement. This view is rejected by another because any change in the foundation will lead to the overall redesign, meaning they have to start from scratch. It will take more time not to mention the water deluge system with the current OLM is still good. But if that is possible, Starbase's original launch pad would also be demolished and reconstructed someday. So, in this case, why did SpaceX begin applying its new design on the OLS in Florida? I have no idea. What do you think? What I'm pretty sure of right now is that the next launch complex, which will be changed, is the second launch complex in Texas or Pad B. Coincidentally, it is under assembly. After it has been tested successfully and comes online, the first one will follow. This is very important because it's related to SpaceX's goals this year. We know that Starship's both stages are expected to be recovered, meaning the gigantic vehicle is planned to be either caught by Mechazilla or splashed down. My vote is for the real test for catching Starship and I will explain. While the first launch tower only took about a year to complete, given the experience and rapid pace, why don't we believe that the second launch tower will take half that time? What's more, SpaceX kicked off the build of the second one at the end of last year and so far, it has been nearly half of the year and the work goes so fast. The second, therefore, could go online this year. Besides that, I think that the reconstruction of Pad A will take place in 2025 or later. This allows SpaceX to use one of two operational pads in Starbase for the test of catching, ideally trying the new design in advance. The remaining one is back up in the case the first one fails or gets damaged. Another opinion on removing the leg from the LC-39A's launch pad is to install a deluge system unified with the support leg rather than to have to puzzle together pieces as was done at Starbase or even it is not excluded that a flame trench will be applied there. Some worry that water jackets aren't enough to protect the OLM from damage and the flame torch still wears the surface beneath slightly every launch. Additionally, the deluge plates made of steel tend to erode more easily and quickly. Could they shift to tungsten? Tungsten and steel have significantly different properties, including their resistance to erosion. Tungsten is generally harder and more resistant to erosion than steel. This is because tungsten has a higher melting point, greater hardness, and better resistance to chemical and thermal wear compared to most types of steel. Tungsten's hardness and resistance make it particularly useful in applications where erosion, wear, and high temperatures are concerns, such as in the aerospace industry, in the manufacture of cutting tools, and in electrical applications like filaments for light bulbs. Steel, while strong and versatile, is generally more susceptible to erosion compared to tungsten, especially when exposed to abrasive or corrosive environments. However, the erosion resistance of steel can vary depending on its composition and treatment. In summary, tungsten typically has better erosion resistance compared to steel due to its superior hardness, higher melting point, and resistance to chemical and thermal wear. So why does SpaceX prefer steel for its mega pancake 
SpaceX used steel for the water deluge system primarily because of its cost effectiveness, durability, and availability. The water deluge system is used to suppress acoustic energy and reduce the thermal impact during rocket launches. Steel, particularly stainless steel, is a durable and corrosion-resistant material that can withstand the harsh conditions of rocket launches, including exposure to salt water from nearby bodies of water, such as the Atlantic Ocean where SpaceX's East Coast launch facilities are located. Additionally, Steel is relatively easy to fabricate and install, which may have contributed to its selection for the water deluge system. SpaceX often opts for cost-effective solutions that meet their performance requirements, and steel likely fulfilled those criteria for the water deluge system. The second of several planned Starship launch sites has been built in Florida for more than four years or in late 2019. Ironically, work on that pad began before the company started building the pad that would actually support Starship's first orbital launch attempts. SpaceX began constructing Starship's Texas launch site in earnest in late 2020. There are several reasons for choosing Florida as an additional launch site, such as Pad 39A is the only site currently capable of launching SpaceX's Crew Dragon astronaut spacecraft or Falcon Heavy rocket, which has complicated its plans to use the same pad for Starship. Therefore, SpaceX aimed to certify another launch pad at Space Launch Complex 40 to support astronaut and cargo missions with its second-generation Dragon spacecraft. They are now in the final stage. At the end of February, the company performed a test of its new emergency egress system featuring a type of deployable slide. Florida has a hard coast to work on to prevent sinking and subsidence that is occurring at Starbase Launch Complex. The area around Starbase is characterized by loose and unconsolidated soils, including sandy and silty sediments. These types of soils are prone to settlement and compaction over time, particularly when subjected to heavy loads or changes in groundwater levels. Being situated near the Gulf Coast exposes the site to coastal erosion, saltwater intrusion, and fluctuating water levels. These environmental factors can exacerbate soil instability and contribute to subsidence. Changes in groundwater levels, whether due to natural fluctuations or human activity such as groundwater extraction, can affect soil stability and lead to subsidence. Groundwater pumping, common in areas with high water demand like Texas, can cause land to sink as the soil compacts without adequate support from water. Another point is that intensive construction activities associated with building and expanding the Starbase infrastructure can also impact soil stability. Heavy machinery, excavation, and soil compaction during construction can further exacerbate settlement and subsidence. Last but not least, rising sea levels and increased storm activity associated with climate change pose additional challenges to coastal infrastructure like Starbase. These factors can accelerate coastal erosion and increase the likelihood of soil instability and subsidence. Starbase remains SpaceX's favorite location to build Starship outpost infrastructure, though. It is because it's near the shoreline, mostly inhabited near the equator, closer to California, has an experienced and capable workforce in Texas and Texas State, and local legislators offered tax incentives to build a rocket factory and launch site there. To ease the overcrowding here, they had to look for more locations and LC-39A was one of them. Officially, SpaceX will not be moving Starship spaceport out of Texas. With the first hint of the installation of a white gateway to Mars sign in November, the company tacitly confirmed that in the long term, Starbase in Boca Chica will be home to Starship operations. And that becomes even more certain with confirmation from Starbase General Manager Kathy Lewiters SpaceX's plan is to make the company's Boca Chica complex its premier manufacturing, launching, and operational center for our Starship. Starbase is really becoming a transformational piece of SpaceX, she said. Luiters' announcement has wiped away any lingering concerns that SpaceX would move primary orbital launch operations to Florida, leaving just research and development and production in Texas. That was an idea planted early last year, in the context of the FAA's postponement of Starship IFT-1, if the situation did not improve, he would be forced to move to Cape Canaveral. And then, Starship has flown twice, and Elon still lives here. Yeah, congratulations to the Texans, all of you deserve it.
being here, everything just felt right. The people of Boca Chica, Brownsville were also nice and helpful. Starbase will continue to be a success and that entire area will flourish. While the people of Texas are celebrating the security of their future, one question is put, why did Elon change his mind? Or in other words, what exactly happened to SpaceX's Florida Starship launch site? Well, didn't I say it was because the FAA had already issued a license to Starship? Honestly, that's just the surface. There are actually some things worth mentioning here. To fully understand, we should go back a few years to when SpaceX planned to build a Starship launch pad just southeast of the Falcon rocket launch pad within the fenced perimeter of launch pad 39A. The company is also interested in developing another Starship launch pad known as Launch Complex 49, a few miles to the north. Work at Launch Pad 39A in Cape Canaveral started in 2019 to modify the existing site with additional capabilities to support Starship. These activities include preparing the facility to launch prototypes of Starship's upper stage. A second phase of the construction planned in 2020 was to build a much larger launch mount capable of launching the entire Starship launch vehicle. During that time, the company also completed an environmental assessment. And in late 2021, SpaceX finally began constructing the second iteration of Starship's first Florida pad. Orbital Launch Site 2 is still located at Kennedy Space Center's LC-39, a pad which SpaceX leases from NASA. SpaceX has also completed the fabrication of a massive pair of steel arms, transported them to Pad 39A, attached them to a wheeled vehicle, and installed the structure on the Starship launch tower in Florida. In 2022, significant progress has been made toward this objective, notably with the nearly completed Starship launch tower next to the Falcon 9 mount at LC-39A. However, following concerns arising from the mishap during the first Starship flight, most Starship operations at the Florida facility have been temporarily halted since then. Why is that? Currently, LC-39 stands as the sole United States site with the capability to launch crewed Dragon capsules. This is the only spacecraft currently available to transport astronauts to the International Space Station. That makes the launch pad a national asset rather than solely for experimental flights. If a Starship were to experience an incident at LC-39 a NASA could lose its only access point to the International Space Station. When a Falcon 9 rocket exploded at LC-40 in 2016, causing extensive damage that required a complete rebuild, SpaceX took 15 months to revive the launch pad. In other words, if a Starship launch fails and destroys the Falcon and Dragon facilities at Pad 39A at some point within 12-18 months, in fact, another spacecraft that NASA chose to replace Dragon Boeing Starliner is many years behind schedule and is still not qualified to launch humans. Therefore, they have no hope of taking over the supply duties for the ISS. Given this high-stakes scenario, it becomes imperative to conduct rigorous testing and explore alternative launch options for crewed flights before Starship can be cleared for launches from Florida. But keep in your mind that there is no give-up culture at SpaceX. Just then, they came up with another interesting idea. To the southwest of Space Launch Complex 40 is SpaceX's Roberts Road facility, housing SpaceX's Falcon 9 refurbishment facility Hangar X and the Cape Canaveral Star Factory. An access tower is rising for SpaceX crew and cargo dragon missions. Once the tower is complete, it will relieve a bottleneck at Pad 39A, which is currently the only pad equipped for dragon launches. The construction of an additional tower for Crew Dragon emphasizes SpaceX's dedication to establishing a strong and secure pathway for crewed missions, thereby minimizing risks to critical ISS access points. NASA will no longer have concerns about potential issues related to a giant new experimental rocket starship could potentially halt all SpaceX Dragon launches in one fell swoop was apparently one bridge too many for the agency. Not just enough. SpaceX currently is making modifications within the Launch Complex 39 of pad perimeter to support Starship launches while maintaining the ability to launch Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy missions, NASA said in a statement after the most recent Starship launch. SpaceX's activities are covered by its agreement for the pad's use. For now, 
SpaceX is only allowed to build out the infrastructure at LC-39A. Launching and landing will involve further review and approval to include construction of a launch pad that meets NASA's safety and environmental requirements, NASA said in a statement. NASA currently is evaluating an update to the 2019 environmental analysis for Starship operations at LC-39A to include operational changes as well as additional needed infrastructure in support of the Starship program. Okay, here the problem is solved, but why is the sign Gateway to Mars held in Starbase instead of Florida? After careful consideration, the company finds that South Texas is still a haven for Starship operations. As I said, the majority of Texans welcome SpaceX's presence because the company has helped their hometown become a boom town. Here, SpaceX tends to receive local benefits such as tax rebates and so on will also factor in. Additionally, once the Starship rocket and its Stage Zero get better, this means there will be less risk of a serious explosion in the future. Thus, the FAA will be more open to issuing Starship launch licenses in Boca Chica. Another point that can't help but talk about is geography. Well, if you were attempting to launch a super heavy rocket accompanied by a high flight cadence, where would you rather sight it? In a spacious, comfortable place where you only have a handful of locals to worry about, or have to squeeze into a densely populated area and have to share space with other companies. Yet, it does not mean SpaceX will give up on the plan to launch Starship in Florida. As Elon said last February, it's important to have redundancy and redundancy is key. The launch pads in Florida would play a role as a lifeboat for the overloading in Starbase under the thick frequency of Starship flights in the future. We're going to build more Mechazillas. So there's going to be two launch towers here and, and, I think, and then two launch towers at the Cape as well. So we'll have uh, four launch towers for, for Starship probably you know, by sometime next year. So we're aiming to have the first Cape launch tower and launch system operational around the middle of next year. Um, and that'll be important for launch uh, azimuths that are uh, sort of fly over land. So I think we, we, what, what we should probably expect is that we, we do the kind of the development launches here, test anything new here, build the, build the rockets, and then uh, probably most of the operational launches would be from the Cape. One more time, the space community gets fired up by what Elon Musk revealed in his latest presentation to employees in the wake of Starship Flight 3. At the event on April 4, SpaceX's CEO shared new and interesting information about their progress, especially on the Starship project and Mars colonization. It's safe to say that this talk is in addition to the previous all-hands meeting in January 2024. One of the worthwhile news is about Starship's launch pad, we can clearly see that SpaceX is planning to make a major transformation of Starship's infrastructure. The focal point of the Red Planet will gradually shift from R&D to factories, Bocachica, and launch Cape Canaveral. The Starship rocket has flown three times and its main goal this year is to back intact. The odds of catching the booster with the launch tower this year are 80 to 90 percent. That's very much a success-oriented schedule, but it is within the realm of possibility, Musk said. Therefore, at this point, SpaceX has to invest more in the production of more prototypes for testing and completing the necessary ground support system for the rocket launch and landing. Of course, R&D activities will always occur simultaneously, but it will no longer be the main point now. To serve that production, launch, and land, low-cost areas like Florida and Texas need to be prioritized since both offer several advantages for growing operations in higher-scale industries like construction and manufacturing. These two states also hold the two spaceports that Starship will launch from Cape Canaveral and Bocachica. Previously, people had considered the Starbase in Bocachica, Texas to be where the majority of Starship launches were served. However, this was changed. Cape Canaveral will launch the first humans to Mars. This partly explains SpaceX's surprising move toward its launch mount on LC-39A in March, with the entire current leg being demolished. This raised doubts about a new design on OLM serving for catching Starship next year. It sounds like Elon Musk had this intention since 2023, when at the International Aeronautics Conference in Baku in October, he also mentioned the possibility of catching Starship in 2024 somewhere in Florida. 
From now to later this year, I'm sure there will be many activities in LC-39, uh, such as constructing OLMA water deluge system or even a flame trench and the launch tower. SpaceX must complete and test the new structure no later than the end of this year or January next year. Thus, the new launch tower can catch Starship in the first quarter of 2025 as expected. In addition to LC-39A, another eyed place is the SLC-37 launch pad. After the final flight of ULA's Delta IV heavy rocket, one of the largest launch pads at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station would become vacant. By the way, a pretty long time ago, SpaceX proposed its desire to take over this place for the U.S. Department of the Air Force. Although Delta IV Heavy had a bittersweet end to its 16th and final launch on April 9, SpaceX has to wait until summer 2025 when the environmental review for SpaceX's proposal is active. After that, SpaceX will be able to make the sprawling facility a new home for the Starship launch vehicle. So all their attention is now on redesigning the OLM in the LC-39A. To be honest, it's not surprising that SpaceX considers Florida as another gateway to Mars. If NASA is concerned that Starship's testing activities could cause damage to the infrastructure here, launching the rocket once the vehicle is reliable enough is a good idea. Thanks to that, SpaceX will have two separate, highly specialized areas in the near future, one for testing and the other for commercial flights. In addition, selecting Florida for the majority of Starship launches can better solve the conflict between SpaceX and Texas's local residents. Some segments of Texans expressed negativity about the Starship flight tests, saying that the high vibrations from these tests negatively impacted their lives. If Elon's plan works, the number of launches in Starbase will be decreased significantly in the future. Some hypotheses even indicated that this is just the initial step in Elon's long-term plan to move SpaceX's headquarters from Hawthorne, California to Space Coast, Florida by 2035. This is reasonable because while in California, aerospace companies usually face several challenges due to the regulatory environment and high costs, Florida has emerged as a lower cost counterpoint for companies that want to grow operations in higher scale industries like construction and manufacturing. Florida has a talent, capital, and regulatory environment for startups solving the last mile of launch. Once Starship's launch cadence increases, new problem sets will emerge closer to the point of launch, requiring excellent spaceport logistics. Those matters include, the first one is upfront coordination processes, which are defined broadly as platforms to streamline, track, and improve front-end processing procedures and policies. The second is logistics, broadly referred to as storage, security, fueling, support, and transportation capabilities. And the last one is round systems, defined broadly as dedicated networks, command and control on orbit operations and global antenna networks. Fortunately, in Florida's Space Coast, especially the area surrounding Cape Canaveral, there is always a talent base with specific experience in spaceport management and logistics to handle these problem sets. Another attraction in Florida is its environment which benefits SpaceX in tax and politics. For example, moving SpaceX's headquarters to the Cape would build a collaborative relationship with political leadership in Florida, thus giving Elon enormous influence in the two largest red states. Elon also used this maneuver to make a similar relationship with Greg Abbott, the Texas governor when he moved Tesla's manufacturing headquarters to Texas. Besides politics, this is also beneficial for business activities on Mars later. SpaceX can help startups selling to SpaceX to reduce costs by building their goods as close to the launch pad as possible. In exchange, Elon Musk can chase his Mars colonization for a long because a city there, at least, will require something basic as follows, power generation, ice mining, propellant production, long duration life support, construction development, and communication navigation. Elon added, So I think this would open up a lot of opportunities for entrepreneurs that want to create any create things on Mars, whether that is a propellant, well, well I think we'll have to do the propellant depot, but uh, whether it's uh, like iron ore refining or a pizza joint or a bar, you know, uh, there'll be an opportunity to do all the things that we like on Earth on Mars. 
With the available ample venture capital in Florida and SpaceX positive activities here, Space Coast will attract startup founders seeking closeness to the action and tight feedback loops with SpaceX's launch operations. Florida's notoriously business-friendly policies and more liberal cultural climate will be a huge plus over California's overbearing regulatory approach. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. If you want to explore more aspects of the world's most powerful rockets and the world of rockets in general, here is a selection of deeper dive videos for you. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you next time.